Welcome to the Hour of Revelation from the Word of God, the Holy Bible. That will cause a revolution in your life through this teaching by Pastor Hani Mutukeza, Pastor of Kampala Bible Revelation Church, which is located at Mukubira Zone, Makerere in Kampala, Uganda, East Africa. Here is Pastor Hani Mutukeza. What a man! How many are excited about this one? What a man! Bless his holy name! That, that, that you begin to know that you cannot be limited. That, that it doesn't take some, ma, some great man of God's prayer to make you have a breakthrough as they, as they call it. You hear of you hear of big ministries talking about breakthrough. Every time you hear breakthrough seminar, is something is telling you that you are cornered somewhere. Right? Every time you hear breakthrough, and someone here is about to break through, that means the rest are cornered. You are somewhere in an anthill. Praise God for this man too. For the Lord let me know that nothing can limit me. I may be black, but I am unlimited. I may be in Uganda, but I am unlimited. That I have no desire whatsoever to go abroad in the name of breakthrough. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I got a breakthrough after a 40-day fast. You know, Mzungu called me on phone and said, come over. And I'm telling you, I've broken through. That's a lie of the devil. We don't break through by flying in a plane. There are so many guys who fly in those planes who are, who are so limited that much as they fly in the plane, they literally, they are ducks. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> bless your name, bless your name. Living an unlimited life. Can we say it together? Living. One more time. One more time, maybe. Living an unlimited life for you are dead. Isn't that good news? For you are dead. That's good news. You have that, that scripture there. And it says, for you are dead. This is what I'm saying. This is good news. How many are glad are dead? Oh, okay. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When we talk about life, what are we talking about? What is life? Oh, no, 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 no. Leave alone that scientific definition of life. Talk about cells, you know. Anything that's living has living cells, and there are these cells which multiply, and all those things, and they have instructions in them. Talk about DNA, RNA, and all those things, and Talking about meiosis, mitosis, I, 
my biology is so limited. What is life? Have you ever thought about it? What is life? Bless his holy name. So let's go to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. When did man become a living soul? After God had breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. When did man become a living soul? Man became a living soul after God had breathed into his nostrils. Nostril simply means nose. God breathed the breath of life into the nose of man, and man became a living soul, a living being. So without the breath of God, we cannot talk about life. So what is life? Life is when your heart is beating. How many times per second? I, and then uh, uh, when, when your lungs are functioning, they've taken oxygen, and, and when your intestines and everything, you know, your joints and, you know, your body, when the blood is... Oh, that is not... Man began to live after God had breathed into his nose the breath of life. So without the breath of life of God, there is no single man living. The rest are simply living on oxygen. Deprive them of oxygen and they are gone. Of course, the breath of life of God was not oxygen. Because even cows breathe in oxygen. Did God breathe into their noses? What is life? It's the breath of God. In a body of a human being. Pastor, when you do exercises, you know, you go to the gym and all those things, and then you have a good life. Maybe you have a good body. Maybe you have a good body, a tamed body with muscles which are, and joints which are flexible, something. What is life? Life is the breath of God in the body of a human being. In John chapter 20, John chapter 20, And verse 22, Jesus had risen from the dead. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and says to them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of Jesus. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and says unto them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, so, so, something very interesting here is, is happening. Was he breathing on dead bodies? Was he breathing on dead bodies? Were the disciples dead that he breathes on them, then they become alive? Oh, this, <laughs> they were alive. They were alive. When they saw him, they were so terrified. They said, maybe 
This is a ghost. He said, no, I'm the one of just risen. Then he said, how could you go through the water? this is my resurrection body. I'm the very one. He said, please stop panicking. Something else is happening. Then he, did they, are they the ones who asked him to breathe on them? No. They didn't even know what he was, going, what, what he was about to do. They were not dead. They were alive. Then he breathed on them. How many by faith can see that what he did here it was exactly what was what God did in Genesis? How many can see that by faith? <laughs> Bless his holy name. So when God breathed, breathed into man the breath of life, when man sinned, he lost it. When Jesus came and died on the cross, rose again, he came and brought back the breath of God into their nostrils. I wish I had a better amen. amen. Wow, thank you, Jesus. I wish I had a better amen. amen. Because some of you think you are just survivors. Actually, some of you refer to yourselves as survivors, strugglers. Some of you refer to yourselves as hard workers. It's the reason you live. When we're talking about life, we're talking about the breath of God in the body of a human being. It's because most of us are not aware of this breath of God that we go the, where, where we go. That's, how, that's why some of us are born again, but we have no peace. We have no joy because we even don't know what we are carrying on our inside. Living an unlimited life. Bless Jesus. And Jesus breathed on them the breath of life. And they became the living disciples. And Jesus breathed on them the breath of life of God. And the disciples became the living disciples. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. Free of charge. Receive the breath of God. He said, receive life. Receive life. Begin to live this life. Receive it. And he breathed on them. The breath of life, of God, the Holy Spirit. Bless the name of Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 21, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 21. You are not as small as you think. You are not as small as you think. The Apostle Paul said, Therefore let no man glory in men. Therefore let no man glory in men. Let no man boast in men. For all things are yours. He must tell us which things these are. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. It's up to you to choose whether to live or to die, whether to be happy or to sorrow, you can choose to prosper or to remain poor. You can choose to be healed 
You can choose to be sick. All things are yours. All are yours. He said, he said, all things are yours because you are Christ's. And Christ is God's. When we talk about life, what is life? Life is one of the choices. You can choose to live if you want. You can, you can choose to die if you want. You can choose to prosper. You can choose to read and read as much as you want. You can choose to marry. You can choose to get married. All things are yours. Now that all things are yours, what are you asking for? Now that all things are yours, what are you asking for? The way you ask, you ask as if you don't have. Why do you ask as if you don't have when all things are yours? What kind of life do you want to live when all things are yours? What is it about your choices? What is it about your choices? All things are yours. Paul said, all things are yours. The reason they are yours is because you are Christ's. Whoever is Christ's all things are theirs. Whoever is of Christ, all things are theirs. Whoever is of Christ, all things are theirs. What kind of life do you want to live? He said, you want to live? He said, you want to die? What do you want? Whatever you want, all things are yours. You can choose to die tomorrow. It's your choice. You can choose to live up to 100. 120. It's your choice. All things are yours. Some of us don't know the kind of life we are living. Some of us are, are even guided by a mentality of the worldly. No pain, no gain. There are preachings all over the churches. He who doesn't work doesn't eat. That's a lie from the devil. That's a lie of the devil. We don't know the kind of life we are supposed to live. We are supposed to live an unlimited life. Because this life is the very breath of the unlimited God residing on your inside. We don't know the kind of life we are living. We are living a glorious life. We have on our inside. From the day you got born again, and from the day you invited that, that's why he said, receive the Holy Spirit. It's up to you to receive. All things are yours. The Holy Spirit, the world, God, the Father, Jesus, death, life, poverty, prosperity, English, Swahili, Luganda, all things are yours. It's up to you to choose. That's why he said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you want, receive. That day you receive the Holy Spirit, that was the breath of God. That's when you began to live. That's when you began to to live. The rest are surviving. There are so many surviving Christians, by the way. In John chapter 14 and verse 6, can you imagine that very common verse? Jesus said, I I am the way, the truth. Then he said, and the life. Then he said, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. In other words, 
Only Jesus can give this life. Without him. Let me ask you. Naturally. Let me ask you. Naturally. Apart from your life, what else do you have? Apart from your life, what else do you have? I mean, if you lost that life, that natural life, what else would you have? All of us are sitting here because we are alive. That is all. If one of us were dead, and God forbid, I mean, there's no dead among us here. Can you imagine that? But we are dressed differently, and that doesn't matter. Except for those who, it doesn't matter at all. The lowest common denominator must be, you are alive. And that's a serious issue, right? The same with the life of God. Someone is saying, I don't really need the Holy Ghost. For what? Why do I need the Holy Spirit? I'm alive. And I'm born again. And I'm going. You are alive. You are born again. You are going to heaven. You want to live? Don't you know that when he gave them this Holy Spirit, that's when they became alive? Only when he breathed into his nostrils, that man became a living soul. Someone says, I don't need the Holy Spirit. For what? He, he said, the whole me. How can I begin to speak in tongues? The whole me. When a young man is looking at me, and I begin to bubble my lips. When a young man is, look, is looking at me, and I begin to bubble my lips. Will he get married to? Without the Holy Spirit, you are not living yet the unlimited life. Without the presence of the person of the Holy Spirit in your life, you are not living this unlimited life yet. You'll go to heaven, no problem. You are born again, no problem. But you are limited. That's why you go by feelings. That's why emotions overwhelm you. That's why you go by what people say. That's why you have to watch soaps to make permanent personal decisions. That's why you follow stars. Sports stars, music stars, film stars, whatever they say, you'd rather follow. Because you're a mere survivor here on earth. You can live this life unlimited by the presence of the breath of God in your life. The person of the Holy Spirit. I'm, uh, you know, I, I joke a lot, by the way. I joke a lot. I'm really playful. I'm very playful, and I, <laughs> and I enjoy it. But there are some issues when I'm not playing anymore. This is no playing issue. Someone must be filled with the Holy Spirit. No surviving in this place. You must live, and this, live this life unlimited. I wish I had a better amen. amen. I'm not talking about reading the Word of God. I'm not talking about praying. I'm not talking about fasting. I'm not talking about giving. I'm not talking about morals. I'm talking about getting filled with the Holy Spirit. So you begin to live the unlimited life. 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 So so life. It just shows. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it just shows. You don't need to tell anyone. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. It just shows. It just shows. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, he said, a living dog is better than a dead lion. 
He said a living dog is better than a dead lion. He said a living dog is better than a dead lion. Of course, a dead lion has great features on it. But that dead lion is not doing anything more than rotting. And this dog which is alive can bark at a thief. I would rather be a living dog. I would rather be a living dog. I would rather be a living dog. I would rather be a living dog than... Then my eyes are deceiving me. Could I be seeing some lions here? Am I looking at dogs or lions in the house? John 5.39 John chapter 5 and verse 39 Jesus said to the Pharisees He said you cite the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. See that? The scriptures. That the scriptures don't have it is it on life. Scriptures don't have it on life. Scriptures don't have eternal life. Scriptures point us to the eternal life giver. They are not the end in themselves. They are pointing you to someone. That's why I love it. That the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is simply pointing me to one person. It's not pointing me to 666. It's not talking about beasts. It's not talking about... I don't want to offend many of you here. The whole Bible is simply pointing to one person. Anywhere you read, you read Adam, you read about Adam. You know, so many of us hate Adam and Eve, right? You hate him for nothing. Adam and Eve are pointing to... Stop hating Adam and Eve, by the way. They are in heaven. They are your brothers and your sisters. They brought us all these problems. No! If it were you, you would have done worse, actually. <laughs> Adam and Eve are pointing to someone. David is pointing to someone. Bathsheba is pointing to someone. Solomon is pointing to someone. <laughs> someone needs to hear. Nebuchadnezzar is pointing to someone. Nebuchadnezzar. Talking about Nebuchadnezzar. He said, you search the scriptures... For in them you think you have eternal life. Those scriptures don't give eternal life. Those scriptures point to me who has this eternal life. And you are not willing to come to me that I may give it to you. You cannot get life from Jesus and it is not eternal. You can't. You can't get this life from Jesus and you need someone to pray for you. You cannot get this life from Jesus and must kill somewhere before a man of God lay his hands on you. Repent and shame on you. How dare you? When Jesus gave you this life, this life he gives you, what he gave you was eternal life. What else do you want? What else do you want? It's eternal life, unlimited life. Eternal simply means unlimited. Eternal simply means without beginning, without end. It's unlimited. That day you met Jesus, you received it. What makes you to live like a pauper? As if you don't have it. What is it? He said, now that you are Christ and you have this life, who things are yours? What else do you want? What else do you want? Pastor, I have a problem with this church. They don't call people forward to be prayed for. How shall we be healed of our diseases? 
Ah, those diseases are yours. And also healing is yours. All things are yours. It's up to you to choose. Even if I lay my hands on you, when you have chosen that disease, it, you'll still remain with it because it's, all things are yours. Whether life, or death, or poverty, or well, I mean, I, I, I could tell you I'm heavily anointed to prosper you. And I can say as I lay my hands on you, you're turning into a millionaire in 24 hours. But until you choose, it's all yours. Poverty is yours and wealth is yours. Dollars are yours and you can choose to pick stones instead of dollars. All stones are yours. You can go just outside there and pick those stones. There are very, very many stones out there. Or, or, or you can choose to pick dollars instead of those stones. All dollars are yours. All pounds are yours. All Kenyan shillings are yours. We are not in Kenya, but all Kenyan shillings are yours. What is it that you want? Oh, praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. All this suffocation we see is because of the absence of someone called the Holy Spirit. He's the one who will make that life unlimited. He's the one that will make you to go places you've never dreamt about. By the way, the Holy Spirit is so up to date. He knows all the planes which are in the world. He knows the recent cities you've just built. The Holy Spirit knows. He can take you there. All things are yours if you want. You see, but by now, I'd have traveled widely by now. All things are mine. It's because I don't want. All things are mine. And someone is thinking, when will he finish preaching? First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5 and verse 11. Bless the name of Jesus. He said, and this is the record that God has given to us, which life? Unlimited life. And this unlimited life is in his son. He that has the Son has unlimited life. And he that has not the Son of God has not unlimited life. It's just that simple. You have him, you have it. You don't have him, you don't have it. How come you have him and you don't have it? What's wrong? How come you have him and you don't have. That one is not written. That one is not written. You have him. You have it. You don't have him. You don't have it. As for you, you have him. And you don't have it. Something is wrong. Something is wrong around there. Something is wrong around there. Someone need to begin to believe. The life I'm living is unlimited. All those who boast over me, I should throw them out. All those who keep boasting, you know, for me, you know, with us, you know. Throw them out and begin to see yourself unlimited. You know, some of you have to be... One time I was at campus and on one of those farewell parties and some professor stood up and said, now as you're going out, jobs are not easy to find. It's hard out there. Very, very hard. He said, the city is like a port. It's burning. It's burning. You can't just go and just fit yourself somewhere. So you have to really make sure that you pray harder. What do you mean by praying hard? And what do you mean by praying harder? And when is it hardest? What do you mean by hard prayer? And some, of us have, and some of us have listened to teachings. Some of us have listened to teachings which have killed everything that we would have believed. There's something following you. That's why you, you are always limited. That there's something following you. Actually, it began following your great-great-grandmother. 
Then he closes his eyes and he says, I'm seeing your great grandmother. I see a frog defecate on, uh, 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 on, on her left foot. Anyone has, has ever seen a, a frog's feces? The devil is a liar. When those guys begin to close their eyes, they have no formula they are following. They can say anything that pops into their mind. Anything. Your great, great grandfather one time sacrificed a cat and gave to your great, it was your great grandfather who ate the head of the cat. That's why every time you dream, you see a, a white cat having a black head. They have no formula. They, have no, they can say anything. And by the way, it's up to you to believe all things are yours. A cat with a black head when it's white, all things are yours. Whatever you want to believe, it's up to you. The problem with that is that they, they are explaining your limitations. Why are you limited? They are trying to explain your limited because they are prayed and they have failed. They are prayed over you many times and they have failed. That's why at one time he closed his eyes and said, when your mother was getting pregnant, at that very moment, she saw a hyena peeping There's, they have no formula. And a hyena is a very greedy animal. That's why you have that appetite. I, and I'm calling it, no, I'm calling it appetite for money. Yeah? Some pastors don't have very good English, by the way. So, yeah, appetite for money. They have no formula. Now, I wouldn't mind all their bad English and all, and all those, well, whatever, the knowledge they may be having. Unless they, they say, that's the word of knowledge. But my problem is, if that begins to limit you, that's why I come in. And I come in boldly to tell you that all those are lies. All things are yours because you are Christ. If you have Christ, all things are yours. There is no limitation. No limitation. All things are yours. You can begin from here and become a landlord. All things are yours. You can begin from here and build a hotel. All things are yours. You can begin from here and become whatever you want to become that God has ordained you to be. But not look to people. To things that you can't even explain. Things happened a long time ago. Were you there? Was that man of God there? The Holy Spirit has revealed to him. Which Holy Spirit reveals hyenas peeping those who are getting pregnant? That's where this scripture comes in. He says, you are dead. Stop listening to... Do dead people hear anything? Are dead people scared by fire? Do dead people get worried by inflation? Have you ever gone to a graveyard and you had, you, you had voices of worry about inflation? It says for you are dead. Well, what is your problem? You are dead. Every time you lift up your hand, what, what are you trying to do? Do dead people lift up their hands? Why? You live? Why? Do dead people dream? Why are you dreaming? Do dead people dream? Why are you dreaming? Pastor, I dreamt when I was trying to climb. Every time I climb, I fall. Every time I climb, I fall. Every time I climb, I fall. I, I think, Pastor, something is... Uh, I need some prayers. Something is, lit, is limiting me. Because of that dream. Do dead people dream? Why are you dreaming? Stop dreaming.
dreaming in Jesus' name. It's that simple. Tell that dream, I'm dead. How can I dream you? No. No. I refuse to dream you. I'm dead. Dead people don't dream. Have you ever gone to a graveyard and you had them dreaming? Why do people dream? Take those dreams to their pastors. Some people think that to dream is, is, is spirituality. No, to dream is not spirituality. I don't know what it is. But it is not spirituality. You are unlimited. Because you are Christ. You are unlimited. Because you are Christ. Don't follow the world. Follow Christ. For you are dead. And from the day you died, you got hidden. Your life was hidden in Christ. And Christ is hidden in God. That's why you are unlimited. We can be in the same place, two of us. I am born again and he's not. I am hidden in Christ. And Christ is hidden in God. He's not. Whatever happens to him must not worry me. Because as for him, he's not hidden. As for me, I'm hidden. Whatever happened to those people out there must not scare me. Because as for me, I'm hidden. Whatever happened to their course units, course works, assignments, and all those things, dissertations I've had, has nothing to do with me. Because I'm hidden with Christ, and Christ is hidden in God. I always tell people when I'm teaching this, in a, I always say people, a man can hide something. And you look for it, you search for it, and you don't find it. A man can hide something. But this is God. Which devil can ever find you when God has hidden you? Which devil, which devil can dare follow something hidden? How can that be? Bless his holy name. How many are living this place with this life unlimited? How many are living this place determined to live an unlimited life? Let me see you by a show of your hands. That's not enough. I wish I had a better amen. amen. Why do you just show me a hand? You should give me more than what I ask. Be scripture, Amen. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I'm so proud of this life. And by the way, I have so many questions. And I answered, and I don't care. Hallelujah. Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. So for you to be dead... The truth is you were crucified with Christ. Then Paul said, nevertheless I live. Yet not I. Is Paul confusing us? How do you say you are living and yet it's not you? Then who are you? He said, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And when Christ lives in me, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. I just believe. I live by the faith. The life that I now live in the flesh, I don't live because of my academic credentials. I don't live because of my connections, political, or family, or whatever. I live by the faith of the... That's why Paul, when he was gathering sticks and took and put them in the, in the fire and a viper hung on his hand, he just shook it into the fire. One of his disciples he was with was Luke. And Luke was the physician. Oh, Luke, huh? The viper has just... No, Luke just... Looked at him with his medical mind. Luke was just humbled and he looked. He waited to see what Paul would say. He's his disciple. He can't say anything. So Luke just suffered with his medical mind. 
Because he knew what was going on in his body at that time. Now the poison is moving. In the bloodstream, it's going towards the heart. And Paul was just talking and just happy and telling them, oh guys, how <laughs> that shipwreck was, you know. What, what, what do you think? God is so good. He was just smiling all over. And Luke was perturbed. He said, this is a medical person. He knows what a viper is. Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. I'm living, but it's not me. So that snake bite, it's not me. It is Christ living in me. That viper has just beaten Christ in me. He said, the life I now live in the flesh. If I want money, if I want education, if I want to marry, if I want to get married, if I want to build a house, the life that I now live in the flesh, I live it by believing. He said, I live it by believing. I don't live it by projections, by estimations, by luck. Oh, pastor, I'm just lucky. I'm not lucky. I am blessed. Paul said, this life we are living is not ours. It's Christ in us. Why do we get scared? Why do we get scared to prosper? Some great preacher, I had her on radio and she said, I told the Lord, never give me a lot of money because I'll run mad. And if you are here with us, with such a mind, get out now. Finally, Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. There is more to your life. There is more to your life. Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. And Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Pastor, when will I build a house? When will I get a car? When will I get married? What are you doing? I want to have a lot of money as soon as possible. Money, 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 money come, money come. What are you doing? Pastor, I want at 30. When I'm 30, when I already have 20 million on my account, when I'm already married, when I already have a house, that's why I'm working day and night. That's why I can steal if I, if I can. That's why I can lie if I can. Because I want to have a bonus in the shortest time possible. Get out of here. Actually, I don't sleep in the night. I'm thinking of how to get money. Get, get over it. Get over it. Your life has nothing whatsoever to do with things. Because all things are yours. All things are yours. Man's life does not consist in the abundance of things. Bless his holy name. Let the spirit come in and take, uh, and take over. Let the Holy Spirit come in and take over. And take you to the next level. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Unlimited life. Unlimited life. Unlimited life. Unlimited life. Rise to your feet quickly. Lift up both your hands. Holy Spirit, take over. Holy Spirit, take over. Thank you for listening to Pastor Hanning Tukiriza. For more information of a prayer and counseling, please call 256 772 444 or email the pastor at hb2kiriza at yahoo.com 
May the Lord richly bless you. Amen. Amen.